Hey folks, Zach here with my son Cruz. This week's story is Jack and the Beanstalk. Really excited for this one. This was one of my favorite stories growing up as a kid and I uh, hope that you guys enjoyed as well. If you like it, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing. It helps us grow and we hope that we can continue to bring you fun and engaging stories. Enjoy. Say bye. Sleepy Winks is proud to present the special two-part series of Jack and the Beanstalk, adapted and performed by Zach Connor. Part 1 A long time ago, in a land just far enough away that you may not have heard about it, lived a young English boy named Jack. Jack grew up on a farm with his mother and spent his days milking and caring for their one cow and tending to their small flock of sheep. Jack and his mother were very poor and were not successful farmers. One early morning after Jack had finished milking the cow, he went inside to have breakfast. After looking through all of the cabinets, the pantry, the refrigerator, the icebox, and even the shed, Jack didn't find even a single crumb of food. His mother shuffled in with a look of despair across her face. She looked at Jack with tears growing in her eyes and said, Jack, we have no food and we have no money to buy anymore. I need you to take the cow into town today and sell her so we can eat. Jack was very upset at this as he loved their cow, but he understood that it was their only choice. So Jack tied a bell and a rope around the cow's neck and led her away from their home. Being farmers, Jack and his mother lived quite far from the town, and the walk would take the whole day to get to town and back home again. About halfway there, Jack came across an old man dressed in rags along the path. Going into town, are you? asked the old man. Jack nodded and said, Yes, sir. I'm bringing our only cow to market. My mother and I have nothing to eat, so I will need to sell her. Mm, nothing to eat, you say? Well, I can help you with that. Jack gazed at the old man with his furrow browed and replied, No offense, sir, but you don't look like someone who can help me right now. The old man laughed out loud, startling Jack a bit, and replied, Oh, son, you shouldn't be so quick to judge. I just so happen to have something here that could solve your problems forever, and I'll gladly trade you for your cow there. Really? What is it? asked Jack excitedly. Oh, uh, beans, replied the old man. Jack's shoulders slumped, and he dropped his head in defeat. No thank you, sir. Beans may feed us for one meal, but we will need to eat tomorrow as well. I have to sell my cow for coin so we can stock our home for the coming winter." The old man laughed to himself. Silly boy, you didn't let me finish. These are no ordinary beans, you see. These are magical beans. The old man reached inside the pocket of his torn overcoat and produced four green, ordinary looking beans. Four beans? I'm sorry, sir, but that's not even a meal for me, let alone for my mother and I. Now, if you'll excuse me, I still have a long way to go to get into town. Before Jack could take another step, the old man reached out a hand and blocked Jack's path. In doing so, Jack noticed some strange markings on the old man's arm, but turned away from it to ask why he had stopped him. Don't be a fool, son. I'm offering you the chance to change your future, your mother's future. All you have to do is have a little bit of faith, and of course, trade me your cow. I promise these beans will feed you and your mother for the rest of your lives. In fact, it will feed an entire town if you want them to. 
You just need to believe it. Jack thought hard about it to himself. These beans couldn't actually feed an entire town. Four beans? That is just not possible. Is it? Reluctantly, Jack took the chance. He handed the rope to the old man. The old man smiled and held out his hand. Jack reached out for the beans and before the old man dropped them into his waiting palm, his eyes sparkled and he said, Be careful when you get there. Only take what you need and nothing more. Greed has a terrible stench. Before Jack could ask him what he was talking about, the old man winked at him and vanished with his cow right before Jack's eyes, the beans falling into his waiting hand. With the beans zipped into his coat pocket, Jack nearly sprinted the entire way home. When he arrived, he found his mother outside sitting on the porch waiting for him. She was surprised to see him home so early. She asked Jack how much money he received for the cow. Nervously, Jack retold the story of the old man on the path, about trading their cow for the beans, and how he had disappeared right in front of his eyes. Jack's mother was furious. Jack, how could you? That was our only hope of surviving the winter. And what do you have to show for it? Beans! For measly ordinary beans they are magical beans mother jack replied the old man said we would never go hungry again he vanished into thin air oh jack you were tricked by an old man using smoke and mirrors i am so very disappointed in you now get off to your room and go to bed right now jack stormed off to his room Angry with himself for being tricked, and angry he had upset his mother. He hurled the beans out of his open bedroom window, slumped down on his bed, and fell asleep. Little did Jack know that when he threw the beans out of his window, they had begun to sprout almost immediately after hitting the dirt. They sank swiftly into the soil and began to produce small sprouts. Normally, this process would take days, but in just minutes, the beans had produced almost fully grown stalks. As Jack dreamt of feasts and a full belly, the bean stalks continued to grow. Higher and higher into the sky they went. After mere hours, the stalks grew so high they disappeared into the clouds. As the stalks grew taller, they also grew wider in order to support the heavy weight of the tall sprouts. Jack had thrown the beans far away from the house, but they were not far enough. Jack was startled awake by the screaming of his mother and ran to her room. When he arrived, he came upon the most unusual sight. His mother was curled up on her bed with the sheets pulled up just under her eyes and in the corner of the room a large green vine-covered trunk had burst through the wall. Jack walked slowly to it and bent around to examine it more closely. He looked all around and made his way up the trunk until he could not see it anymore, for it was hidden behind the clouds high up in the sky. It was then that Jack noticed that this was not just one stalk. It was four very large beanstalks that had twisted themselves around to make it appear as if it were one. It was then Jack realized that these must be from the beans he had thrown out of his window. After a few moments of recovery, Jack's mother climbed out of bed to join in his examination of the wild foliage now growing in her room, where her picture of Aunt Marguerite used to hang on the wall. What is it, Jack? Where did it come from? The beans, mother. They were magic after all, Jack replied with excitement. After a little more investigation, Jack's mother turned to him, a look of familiar disappointment on her face. Jack, there's nothing growing off of this stalk that we can eat. 
This didn't help us at all. In fact, it hurt us even more by putting a huge hole in our house. Maybe I have to go higher to find what the stock is growing. It may not be this low. Jack and his mother agreed. Jack got dressed and began to climb the beanstalk. We hope you have enjoyed part one of Jack and the Beanstalk. Tune in again soon for part two.